This is what it actually looks like cooked brisket. If you haven't cooked a brisket and you're over 30, you gotta reassess your life. Brisket is just a big, dumb piece of meat. It doesn't care that you have a party at five and you gotta get this done. It's gonna be ready when it's ready. And today, we're gonna show you how to cook it. The main part of brisket cooking is literally just tending the fire. Just like in our pig rotisserie video, you gotta stand by the fire and make sure it burns nice and slow with a clean blue smoke the entire time. The meat itself is just gonna get salt and pepper and trimmed up and that's it. Brisket has so much flavor from the type of meat that it is. There's so much beefiness that you unlock once you cook it right. We're gonna try to make sure this comes out super juicy and super moist from the breakdown of all the collagen and all of the different things and, and connective tissues inside, and it's just gonna pour out of this meat. The reality of cooking any brisket is getting up five or 6 a.m. to start your fire, especially if you want it for dinner the same day. I feel like I watch all these different brisket videos and they make it seem like, oh, you just throw it on and sort of cook it and you're done. But I want you guys to see the reality of brisket cooking from tending the fire to controlling temperature fluctuations to making sure that the brisket comes out juicy, tender, and delicious. Yeah, the other one has a hard time with that too. That's why I open it that way. That's it. Like it never even happened. So the downside of this is that I have to cut away a lot of it. No all fat, huh? Yeah. Starting to realize that the cheaper ones are the better ones. Yeah. Well, I just cut probably two pounds out. Yeah, Piece usually right here. You can like grab with your hand, but it's not there now. Well, I guess we're just gonna trim. Where's the brisket? Look, this whole thing is fat right here. That's insane. Is this an expensive piece of meat? It was like 50 bucks for this one. Shut up. But whatever. I mean, there is a lot of meat here. There's also a lot of fat. Look at this piece right here. So we're supposed to like round this off right here. Why? This is just a piece that you normally cut.
like kind of moody, you know? A little over. It was a little defeating with this first kit because I got one that was a lot cheaper yesterday and it was completely full of meat and very little fat. We began noticing after buying a few more over the next few weeks that the more expensive briskets, you really got to check them. Sometimes there's like three inches or two and a half inches of just straight fat on them or a huge glob that weighs a few pounds. You really want to be paying for that. You want meat. For our seasoning, our salt and pepper blend is something we make every year. We take 50% salt and 50% pepper. So like when you have 100 grams of salt, you're gonna get 100 grams of coarse pepper. I like the coarse, kosher, and pepper. And the reason is because there's actual like pieces and sometimes you get like a better texture and bark. You also sometimes get a saltier bark that tastes amazing when it mixes with the beef as it cooks slow. I like to use one of these little containers that we usually get soup in from our Chinese takeout. Helps me just make sure I measure out about half of that container and you try to use as much of it before the end of the seasoning process. Can't really over season brisket because it's pretty forgiving. It's so thick and if you think about it, the whole inside doesn't have any kind of seasoning. So the outside is really where all your salt's gonna come from. We're trying to start out the grill at 270 degrees. Sometimes it fluctuates and goes up and down. Sometimes it'll hit 300 and we'll try to do different things to put it down. I've learned that every grill is a little different and there's little tweaks and little things that you can do with objects that you have lying around. It'll just help you keep the temp nice and low. Once this brisket hits around the 170, you know, 160 range, we're gonna pull it off and wrap it, and this will just help some of that moisture still stay inside and keep it juicy. All right guys, it's about 11.30 a.m. We've been cooking this since about 8 a.m. And this is the reality. This is the first time that you can check your brisket. I would not open the lid up until this point because what's gonna happen is every time that you open the lid, you could drop about 100 degrees, have 100 degrees leave the grill, and then you won't see those back for a long while. It might take 20, 30 minutes for you to get back up to that temp. Right now we're at about 270 still. Let's go check out our brisket. Ooh, oh my goodness, it's looking good. Look at this thing. So we got a little bit of bark. I know this looks like it's burnt, but it's not. Here we're gonna start spraying it down. We got some apple cider vinegar right here. What we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start spraying down some of these spots. And that's really just to see if we have any kind of bark formation. This isn't gonna do too much for moisture, but we're gonna come back about every half hour at this point and keep doing this. So right down really nice. So. Still a couple spots here that we gotta form some bark. I think it's gonna be a couple more hours. We're gonna push through what's called the stall. After the stall, which is between 160 and 170, we're gonna wrap this boy and then it'll be all done. All right, let's close this back up. Technically, this is already ready to eat, but we want it to push through this stall right now. It's at about 160 degrees internally, it looks like. So the meat's about 160 degrees inside. Once it hits about 171, it's gonna push through the stall. You don't wanna stop it right now. Then we're gonna wrap it. And what's gonna happen is all the moisture that's left after the stall is gonna stay inside. It's gonna keep the meat just perfectly moist. It's gonna let our fat and our gelatin and everything, all of the collagen break down and make for an amazing brisket. a 
piece of wood to this. I just wanted to show you guys what I like to do. This is all almost charcoal. You know, this one's just about to be turning into charcoal pretty soon. The last piece, I like to have at least two pieces of wood in here. What I like to do is I like to put one of the pieces in here crisscross, and then I like it to light and let it burn for a little. What's gonna happen is the heat's still co going into the smoker. There's still heat going in and it's still keeping it around 270. I just, I want this wood to burn down a little to get rid of some of that harsh white smoke. What I want is some beautiful blue smoke coming out of my chimney. That's the kind of smoke you're looking for. If you have this super white, just smoke pouring out of the chimney, something's wrong. You gotta go check out your firebox, get something fixed. You wanna have some beautiful blue smoke, nice and slow, drifting out of your smoke box beautifully. I think I just said beautifully like seven times, but it's okay. We just pushed through the stall. We're at 171 degrees. We're gonna take our brisket out, wrap it in foil. We're gonna show you exactly how to wrap this sucker in foil. Put it back on and then we're gonna wait until it hits about 203. Why 203? Because in my experience, when it hits 203, it's ready to go. Every brisket is gonna be a little different. I just cooked one yesterday and it took about eight hours. This one we've been cooking since about 7 a.m. and it's just about a little past noon, I think. It's about 12:14. So in about four and a half hours, we already got great bark. We got amazing color. We are all ready to wrap it up. So everyone's gonna be a little different. That's just how briskets are. Let's go ahead and take a look at this bark formation. Oh yeah, look at that. This is exactly what we're looking for. Really this whole point of pre-wrap is to get this amazing bark, this texture right on your brisket. Really it's insane because I'm telling you guys, this is not burnt. But it's the different proteins and stuff on the top that sort of brown and turn into this amazing, amazing flavor. And you get this amazing crust on the outside. It's not super crispy, but it's barky. It's like it's like tree bark that's a little soft. We're gonna load this brisket off of our smoker. We're gonna put it over here on our cookie sheet, take it inside, wrap it in foil, and bring it right back out. Look at this floppy sucker. That's what I'm talking about. Woo -woo. Okay, we've got really good bark over here. We're gonna go ahead and get this wrapped up. Look at this juicy piece of meat. We're looking just right. We got just a little bit of bounce already. It's already looking bouncy. This part's still just a little tough. I think we need at least another few hours on this, but it's already starting to bend really nice. Be really nice and juicy. So from here, pretty much what's gonna happen is we're gonna start wrapping this up. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to wrap it in the foil. And then from there, what's gonna happen, we're gonna put it right back on the grill. It's probably gonna take a couple hours. There's a special way that we like to wrap it. I use foil, you can use butcher paper. Try to stay away from parchment paper, especially anything with like wax on it or anything like that. This though, when it gets wrapped, there's just a little bit of moisture still left in it and that's gonna help it get super juicy. We're also gonna spray just a little vinegar on the inside of the aluminum foil before we put it in. And then from there, we're gonna make this taste delicious. I'm gonna move this over to the side real quick. We're gonna get our foil ready. But you wanna have a nice space, a nice sort of open space that you can lay this out. What I like to do is I like to get sort of the width of my brisket right here. Usually the width this way. And I usually like to get four or five times that of foil. So luckily this island of ours, the length is just perfect to get this out. So I'm, I'm gonna do at least three pieces here. And what I'm gonna do with these three pieces is measure out about the size of the island and overlap them. And from here what's gonna happen is I'm actually gonna set them out sort of diagonally. So you guys can sort of see these are not perfectly straight edged. And what, what'll, what that'll help do is sort of help us keep the juices inside and stuff. And also what that'll do is as we roll it up, we'll be able to sort of cradle it in more. And this side is gonna have a really nice thick bit of foil. Um, and then, we're, you know, really this thing is pretty long. So once we get it in here, 
you want to make sure that it's well wrapped and good to go. So before we wrap, I gotta run outside real quick and grab the vinegar. I forgot the vinegar out there. Hold up. Whoo, we got our vinegar. I left that outside on accident. We're gonna spray this on the inside of our foil right now. Once we spray it now, we're gonna put a brisket fat side down now. We already cooked it fat side up for the beginning because a lot of our heat came in from the bottom. Now we're gonna flip it and all the juices and everything are gonna really soak through and get into everything. So let's spray this into our foil. I'm gonna pour the rest of this out onto it. And then we're gonna wrap. Ready? Let me tell you guys, brisket is a little messy, so be prepared to get a little mess in your kitchen all over stuff. And We got a white kitchen, so my wife loves when I get stuff all over everything, and it looks amazing. And you know, white kitchens and meat juices always do really well. Let's go throw this sucker out onto the fire. We're gonna get it going for another couple hours. We're gonna try to stick around 250 to 270. The fire sort of, sort of goes in and goes out. We're gonna stick our meat probe in so that we know that when we hit 203, and then we're going to feast. All right, back on the grill we go. We just put another log in our firebox. It's burning down. It's already at the point where it's going to create some good consistent heat. We're ready to put this brisket right on here. We're going to stick our temperature probe in it. Let's get this off here. In we go. Beauty. We're cooking now fat side down, so what we're going to do is put our probe in into the point of the brisket, like the top sort of portion, the fattier portion. From here we're going to stick our probe in back into our little ink bird. So we lost a little bit of temperature when we were inside wrapping. We went down to 164, but that's not an issue. This is gonna pop right back up to 170 in no time. Once we hit about 203, we're gonna be all done. Honestly, if you wanted to, you could do this whole thing in your oven if you wanna cheat. I don't think it's really cheating because the thing is that at this point, the meat's pretty much got all the smoke that it wants and it's not gonna take on too much more smoke flavor. It, you could wrap it, throw it in the oven, it's a lot better. Put it at 230, 250 until it comes up to 203 degrees. You'll have perfect brisket every time. All right, guys, looks like our brisket is all done. Let's get this bad boy off of the grill. Look at this. We're at about 203. Get our thermometer. We're gonna get this out, get it on our cookie sheet, get it inside. We're actually gonna want to get this to rest a little bit, at least an hour. But I can already tell you, this feels amazing. Look at this, how it moves. So nice and jiggly. This feels just right. Let's go ahead and unpack this sucker. So we got our foil. Oh my goodness, right here. It's looking tasty. Still just a little hot. It's been about an hour. And it's still a little hot in here. But man, oh man. We got it upside down right now. So I think what we'll do is we'll flip it real quick. And put it on our cutting board. So let's move this real quick. Get 
get this juicy, juicy. Wow, look at that. Look at this bark. Come out so good. Look how juicy it is. I like to save the foil and put it off to the side because any kind of juice that comes off, I'm gonna like sort of pick it up a little bit. <laughs> Look at how it jiggles. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Jiggle, wiggle, jiggle, wiggle. All right, guys, even though this cooled off a bit, when we cut into it, it's gonna gush out, literally. We're about to have a gusher. All right, so usually you know, the way I like to cut a brisket is there's a little corner piece right here and we're gonna trim it down and then get our slices. And then once I start to see the fat from the other side, the two the, where the two parts split, I start to cut it this way and then go, mm -hmm. and we're all good. So let's chop into here. Let's see what we got. Oh my goodness, it's so tender. This is one of the best pieces right here. I'm gonna save it for myself. What are you doing? Oh, you want it? There's that burnt end. Oh my God. <laughs> on. This is the stuff right here. Ooh, this is the burnt end right here. It's one of the best parts. Really well smoked. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Beefy, smoky, just enough salt. You know, you'd think that piece would have way too much salt on it, but mm -hmm. so good. Let's go ahead and get our slices out of this and See where we're at. Oh yeah, these are looking beauty. I'm, I'm cutting these nice and thick. Thick. Oh my goodness, that's what I'm talking about. We'll cut one of these a little thin so we can do our bend test. So this is how you know if you got a good brisket or not. Has to bend on your finger, look at that. Ooh, still hot in there. But look at this thing. Still bending. It's not tough. That's what I'm talking about right there. It pulls right apart. Mmm. Mmm. So soft. The beefiness is just spectacular. It's just from all the fat and the connective tissue that breaks down. And we're gonna go ahead and keep going through with these slices right now. Slice these bad boys up. Get some really tight shots of this, yeah. babe. Oh yeah, here we go. We got that juicy, juicy right here. Here we go. Got brisket on brisket. All right, we just started hitting our fat layer right here. It's where it's gonna, the two, the point and the flat sort of split off from each other. So what I like to do here is I like to turn it sideways. And this is really that shot. So like if you guys are making this, this is that money shot that everybody does when they do brisket. You guys ready for this? Make sure I don't burn my hands off. <laughs> Cut through that bark. Here we go. Ooh -wee. That's some juicy ass brisket right there. Mmm. Let's just do one big old slice right here. Mm. Nice fatty slice. Here we go. Everything just sounds wet in here. <laughs> well, it sounds probably sort of weird, but whatever. Let's cut us a slice of this. Bang, bang, bang. Here we go, right here. This is the piece right here. We're going to slam this piece. Let's go. Mm. So your friends won't know you got this at Walmart, so don't worry. But this is the brisket for you to try. You guys let me know how it turns out. This is really the stuff that you want to be eating.